Hey, it's great to have you here and uh, for this next session. Uh, we want to deal with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, known as Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for uh, just uh, all the work that Marshall and his crew has done in putting this conference together. And I ask you this afternoon, Lord, to open our hearts and minds and teach us, Lord, uh, your word. We give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to deal with uh, the Watchtower and Bible and Tract Society, known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I put this first slide up here. Uh, this is often the reaction of many Christians when Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking at their front door. Oftentimes, we're like the Blob family at home. We see Jehovah's Witnesses, and we say, quick, everybody act like beanbag chairs. Well, hopefully, uh, after uh, this afternoon, you won't feel like a beanbag chair uh, next time Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking at your door. Most of you are probably familiar with the Watchtower through their two major magazines, both the Watchtower and Awake magazine. Uh, the Watchtower, they publish over 125 million copies, or 19 million copies, I should say. Uh, they publish 19 million copies in 125 languages of the world every two weeks. Uh, the Awake magazine, they publish over 16 million copies every two weeks in some 80 languages of the world. In fact, they turn out more literature in six months than uh, all the printing presses of Christianity do in an entire year. And this mass literature distribution, they are able to reach many people who have not been grounded in the Word of God. I was just over teaching in Russia again, and, and outside Moscow, they have now built the world's largest printing press in the world to uh, flood the former Soviet Union with Watchtower magazines. And they are active in 212 countries of the world. And so it's important that we... Uh, look at this today. just want to give you a little historical background real quickly as to how the Watchtower began. And uh, it was begun by a man named Charles Taze Russell. Uh, Russell, who was uh, raised in a congregational church in Pennsylvania. As he grew up, he says there were certain things he did not like in the Bible. He said he didn't like the teaching of the Trinity. He said it wasn't rational. He could not understand it. He did not like the teaching of hell or God's judgment. So Russell, the founding father of the Watchtower, began to develop his own man-made theology, which he began to publish in the Watchtower magazine in 1879, and then incorporated the organization in 1884 and moved their headquarters to where they are today in Brooklyn in 1909. Now, as we're going to see, Russell was the founding father of Watchtower theology. He was also famous for his many prophecies, as the Watchtower has been throughout the years. Uh, in fact, early on in his writings and teachings, uh, Russell believed and prophesied that Jesus Christ was going to return in 1874. And he had concluded this based upon the dimensions of the Great Pyramid in Giza, Egypt. And Russell, who was heavy into pyramidology and Egyptology, he believed that uh, the pyramid uh, in Giza was a sign from God that, uh, based upon the dimensions, Christ was going to return in 1874. Well, when Christ did not show up, he reworked the dimensions of the Great Pyramid in Giza, Egypt, and came to the conclusion that Christ was actually going to return in 1914. And that 1914 would see the visible return of Christ to establish his kingdom. Well, when Christ did not show up in 1914, uh, that is when the Watchtower uh, redefined the second coming of Jesus Christ and said that Christ had returned invisibly as a spirit in 1914 to have the Watchtower Society. Well, he died in 1916, having been proven to be a false prophet. And it's interesting that uh, Russell, uh, when they buried him, they put over his gravestone. His gravestone is, is a pyramid here, and a friend uh, took these a few years back. But uh, this, is, this uh, pyramid as a gravestone as a fitting symbol for Russell's uh, false prophecies based upon pyramidology. Well... The organization was then taken over by a very dynamic leader, a man named Joseph Franklin Rutherford. And it was under Rutherford's leadership that the Watchtower was built into a tight theocratic organization. And if you ever talk to members of the Watchtower, they claim to be the theocratic kingdom of God on earth. Now, what they mean by that is a theocracy is a government ruled by God. And Jehovah's Witnesses believe that they are God's government on earth, that all other governments are satanic, and only the Watchtower is the true government of God. Uh, this is why, for example, uh, you probably know that a Jehovah's Witness will never salute the flag. Uh, they will never say the Pledge of Allegiance. 
Uh, they will never sing the national anthem. A Jehovah's Witness will never serve in the armed forces of any nation because they believe that all governments are satanic. And they say only the watchtower is the true government of God, what they call the theocratic kingdom. It was also under Rutherford's leadership that in 1931, they changed their name to Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, prior to this, they had been known as the Don Bible Students, the Russellites. But in 1931, they took the name Jehovah's Witnesses, seeking to vindicate the name of Jehovah, that Jesus Christ was not God, the Holy Spirit was not God, only Jehovah, he said, was God. Now, the term Jehovah, uh, we really have no problems with. Actually, it was an Old Testament identification for God. Uh, actually, the Jews never pronounced the name of God. We don't know how it was pronounced. And uh, when they would write the name of God, uh, in Hebrew, when you write in Hebrew, there are no vowels. There are only consonants. And when they would write the name of God, they would spell it uh, Y-H-W-H. Uh, if you ever did pronounce it, which they never did, most likely it would have been Yahweh, but they have anglicized it as Jehovah, referring to this Old Testament identification we find about 4,000 times in the Old Testament. Well, it was also uh, Rutherford that uh, uh, we don't have time to go into all of his false prophecies. He had many. But when he died, uh, the organization was taken over by a man named Nathan Homer Noor. And it was under Noor's leadership in the 50s, they developed their strong missionary outreach, uh, mapping out the entire United States so that every home, every dwelling place would be contacted at least once or twice a year by one of their workers. In fact, let me ask you, how many of you have had a Jehovah's Witness knock at your door? About everyone. Well, it was also under Noor's leadership that in uh, the 1950s, they developed their own translation of the Bible uh, called the New World Translation and it usually has a green cover like the one I have here. And they claim that this uh, was done by five Greek scholars. Well, it becomes quite obvious to anyone who knows Greek or Hebrew that there are gross errors in the Watchtower Bible. And a few years back, we wrote the headquarters asking them for the names of their scholars to verify their credentials. And got an interesting letter back from the Watchtower. They said, quote, uh, we do not make known the names of our scholars because we want to maintain humility. But well, we have since found out who the five men were who did this translation. Uh, come to find out that of the five, uh, only three of them had finished high school. Of those, only one had gone on to college. His name was Frederick Franz, uh, who became the fourth president. Uh, he dropped out of college after one semester in 1913 because Russell told him Christ was returning in 1914. But as we're going to see, they developed this uh, and, by the way, none of them knew Greek or Hebrew. They wouldn't know an alpha from aota if it bit them tomorrow. Um, but they developed this translation as a conscious attempt to twist and pervert certain texts of Scripture, as we'll see, to make it fit their man-made theology of Russell and Rutherford. 